The idea of getting through disclosure. The disclosure process is the most painful and can be the most confusing aspects of trying to recover from infidelity. It can for sure be the biggest barrier that keeps couples stuck and not even knowing how to get through it. I mean, as a concept, it doesn't seem all that difficult. It's actually relatively simple, but it is simpler than I think most of us tend to make it. I know I muddied the water and I know for many out there, it can be really grueling to get through the disclosure process. Today, we're just gonna talk about two really important aspects of disclosure for both the unfaithful and the betrayed. We wanna help you understand that this process can look different. What we wanna do is we wanna at all costs try to shorten it, we wanna add clarity to it, and we want it to be completed because we want every one of you to heal. And healing cannot happen until the disclosure and the disclosure process is complete. And there's a basic sense of when that's happened. It's absolutely critical that we move past the disclosure process to ever get on the other side of healing. So to remind you in essence, what is disclosure? Whether it's found out or it's a confession of an addiction or infidelity, it's the keeping of secrets. It's not knowing what happened. You know, your mate doesn't know what happened. And the one mate holds all the cards to the information. So what secrets were kept, what wasn't revealed or disclosed in your closest relationship that you kind of at one moment in time said, you're my person, I'm gonna tell you everything. You're gonna know important things in my life. So this is gonna always include the when, and it's gonna include sometimes the how that's really important, like the understanding of how that happened and the what, the what happened in those secrets. What were we dealing with? And then the who that the betrayed spouse did not know about. One of the things, if you have been unfaithful and you are struggling to get through disclosure, and unfortunately we've seen this even, you know, it doesn't have to, but it can take some people up to nine months or longer. Um, you've got to start as best as you can, even working through this process that your betrayed spouse, more than anything else, the one thing they need is choice. It's the one thing they didn't have. And they need a choice of how to respond. And if they don't know what to respond to, they can't have that very basic need. To have choice, to have agency, to get to have the decision to decide what we need, what we want, that's a very essence of what it means to be an adult, to be human. And when we have choice taken away, it holds us captive to an event, to a circumstance, to a victim, right? So you can imagine an in infidelity, there's no choice. You gave them no choice and they need that to have freedom. Please understand that concept that I don't think many well-meaning unfaithful spouses out there would ever really like the idea of holding their mates captive, holding them underwater, putting them in handcuffs. And so it can be a risk. They're going to have a reaction. That's what's gonna keep them alive, but they need to have a choice. And so as long as you take to not give them the information, you're robbing them of choice. As an unfaithful, we have to begin to understand that. Think about if you are married, when you got married, I promise you maybe ask your mate to marry you or you had a choice to say yes or no. Most of us, right? So it would be ludicrous just to say, hey, you're gonna marry me in three months and this is what's gonna look like. 
that wouldn't give anybody autonomy choice. Why would we want that kind of captive relationship? So then why would we want that in this process of healing and recovery? So we want to change the notion, right, that giving the betrayed spouse a decision of how they want to respond. If they don't have that, you're robbing them of dignity. You're robbing them of respect. And we want any human to have that. Notice that I never really said or covered that the discovery process covers the why. I mean, it's in some ways, it's one of the first kind of responses and questions that many betrayed spouses have is why. It's an important question, but it's not necessarily part of the discovery process. Why is a really important question that for any of you out there that know parliamentary procedure, I say it's a really good question, but what we're going to do is we're going to table that question because those answers to why will come in layers in time. Instead of asking why, I'll give you some other questions you can start to ask of help me understand this isn't clear and we can go a different route. So again, if anything today, nothing's going to keep your betrayed mate in a state of feeling crazy, helpless, stuck, and traumatized other than when you don't give them a choice. So the one thing now for the unfaithful spouse that I think is imperative as we begin to understand the disclosure process, right? For unfaithful Unfortunately, we see this all the time, that disclosure, again, it should be simple, but it's not. And so it's this question of why is it taking longer than we want it to? Why is it taking weeks or even six weeks? Why is it taking so long for them to get the information out? I'm never justifying infidelity and that it's okay. I want to tell you and remind you, we see this all the time. I want to normalize how many times you know we'll see a couple that'll start to do relatively well they'll come maybe you know to a weekend and then only to find out two weeks later there was more information it's really hard to understand but for someone who's most often had an affair or an addiction that they've kept hidden they are making a choice to start to live differently to start to figure out what it becomes to be an honest person. And this lying, right? It's a pattern of behavior that started a long time ago for an unfaithful spouse. Most often long before they ever maybe even met or married you. And I know it's difficult to think about, but it's existed a long time in their world. And it's a pattern of deception that while ultimately it's dysfunctional, ultimately it's not relational, it did serve a purpose. It's kind of like some scales that need to come off, but they were there. And it's really painful as they try to take the scales off. One analogy I will use is I've been one who's restored an 1890 home. Have you ever seen a home that kind of had old stained, kind of really gross, dilapidated carpet? And then right to your surprise, what you find is there's original hardwood flooring that's been underneath that carpet, right? And just for like an unfaithful spouse, the carpet has to be ripped up. I mean, it does, right? It's heavy, it's messy. Then there's the tack board. Then there's the staples that tediously have to be pulled out of the floor. And how many times, if you have done that project, right, you think you've found them all only when you step on another one and there's another nail in your shoe. So lying and deception, while they're never good, um, it's this shame. It's like that dirty carpet that's been this barrier to what's really original and true underneath. And it has to fall away, but it's a process. When an unfaithful actually starts to see a sense of hope, this sometimes motivates them to share more. And that's actually a good sign, but it's always going to come at the cost of the betrayed spouse hearing more, carrying more pain. But remember, we're going to give them a choice. 
it's going to reset the clock for them. It's gonna, you know, ruin them. It's gonna devastate them for a while. But they do need that choice as the unfaithful starts to peel off the layers. One of the most practical and helpful concepts we just wanna give you today is first of all, again, this idea of really needing choice. We wanna empower you. We wanna be someone that gives people choice and empowers them. And your mate, if they've been betrayed and they question over and over and they're begging, they're really just asking for a choice. And if your unfaithful spouse is really struggling with disclosure, of getting all of the information out, the question we have, right, is are they able to see through all of those layers of shame, dysfunction, hiding, you know, like that carpet, and restoring them to what's really underneath, but that doesn't happen quickly. Sometimes, right, all we can see is what's in front of us and, and we can't change it. Um, it can get really helpless and frustrated in this journey, we all know. But what we can do sometimes that helps is just switch our vantage point ever so slightly. And that often can give us just enough difference to make through. So if you find yourself struggling in either of these concepts with disclosure, thank you for listening.